uh, link on the chat a little late. I'll just wait, give others a minute or two to join in and uh, we'll get started. Okay, good morning everyone and uh, welcome. Thank you for connecting to the class today. Let's take a moment to pray and then we will uh, get started. Could somebody just lead us in prayer? Anybody? Uh, you could just pray, pray with the class, pray together. Let's pray. Anyone? Just... Loving Heavenly Father, once again, Lord, we thank you. We praise you, Master, for this beautiful morning. Lord, we thank you that you have given another opportunity, Lord, to meditate your word and, Lord, to learn from you. Master, I pray especially for your loving servant, especially pray for the pastor, Lord, as uh, he's leading us, Lord, through your word. You bless him, Lord. And, Lord, you bless all of our dear ones, Lord, those who are learning together, Lord. You bless us that, so that, Lord, we will learn and, Lord, we will apply it in our life, Master. We thank you. Praise you. Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, in this course on faith, um, we are we've been developing our understanding and learning about faith uh, week after week. And uh, last week we began talking about the believer's walk of faith. Uh, just started looking at how uh, faith is an integral part of every aspect of our lives. Everything we do, uh, you know, uh, stems out of this, this, this faith in God and uh, it's based on faith in God. So we're just going to quickly review a few things we covered last week and then we're going to go forward. So I'm going to move uh, to the PDF. I hope nobody gets uh, held outside the class as I do this. All right. Okay. So we just, um, just a quick review. Uh, we spoke about the fact that we are saved by grace through faith. So salvation is what God gives to us by grace. And we receive from our side through faith. God gives it to us freely as a gift and we receive by faith. Secondly, we also said that everything must be done in faith. So as we live this life on earth, we trust God, we put our faith in God, everything we do must be done in faith. Um, and we were talking about faith as a key receiving from God. We covered James chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. Uh, James teaches him that whatever we ask, we must ask in faith without doubting. And, uh, you know, when we doubt, we're like the wave of the sea. We, you know, we go back and forth, back and forth. But he says you ask in faith. So the contrast is when, you're, when you and I are asking in faith, there is no doubting. We are firm. We are steady. All right. So, we covered till here, and we're going to pick up from uh, from this point on. Uh, just talking about faith in the life of the believer, as believers in Jesus. Just pointing out that, you know, um, uh, various facets of our life, faith is a very important part of uh, what we do. So number four, faith is the means to gain victory over the world. Um, First John chapter five verse four. Could somebody read this for us, please? First John five verse four. First John chapter five four. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world: our faith. Amen. Thank you. So, John is writing. He says, "You know." Everyone, whatever or whoever, is born of God, overcomes the world. So you and I are people who overcome the world. To overcome is 
uh, you know, to live victorious over the world. This this world represents this whole uh, system of evil and rebellion that's against God, that's uh, opposed to God, opposed uh, to the ways of God. So it's talking about the system uh, that we find ourselves here in. And uh, everything that's contrary to God, contrary to the ways of God, contrary to the purposes of God. So whoever is born of God overcomes. That means we have victory over the world. But this is the victory, or this is the means for victory, or this is the way we have victory uh, uh, over the world. How? It's through our faith. So faith is key here for us to living a victorious, overcoming life, our faith in God. That's how we live uh, victorious, and that's how we overcome uh, this world. So whatever we are learning in this course on faith, you and I begin to uh, uh, learn how to use it as we face and uh, uh, in some way we contend against the things of this world. So the devil is operating, Satan and his demons are operating. There's a whole system of evil and rebellion. And we have to push against it. We are here to, you know, to contend against it. And God says, you know, you, you are an overcomer. You are going to win. You're going to have victory. But then you've got to do it through faith. Which means that if I don't walk in faith, or if I don't contend with these things, things around me, the system of evil and rebellion and what Satan is doing, if I don't contend against those things in faith, then you know, I'm not going to be able to walk in victory. Let me just go back to the class and, uh, you know, I don't want uh, anybody to be held outside. Okay, just make sure uh, everyone's in. All right. Okay, let me go back to the PDF. Um, all right. Uh, so faith is important for us to live victorious. So when we face challenges, when we face things in this world that are opposed to the way we are going, the way God wants us to go, what do we do? We're going to fight against it. You know, the Bible tells us to fight the good fight of faith. And so we're going to fight against it. We're going to uh, push back against those works of darkness. But we've got to do it with faith in God. And we learn how to do that, right? Uh, number five, faith is also our shield against the enemy. So uh, let's just uh, you know read these verses of scripture, and then I'll explain. Could somebody read Ephesians six sixteen for us, please? Above all taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And, and also for speed of 5, 8, and 9, please. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Mm. Amen. So, so, there is an enemy, Satan, and all his demonic powers, forces his demons, they're going to come against us, right? It's an enemy. They're coming against us with their temptations, with their attacks, uh, with their, you know, various schemes. But the Bible is telling us in Ephesians 6, the Apostle Paul teaches us as part of our armor that God's given to us. He says, take the shield of faith. So faith in God, obviously, faith in God is a shield, it's a protection with which we are able to quench or extinguish all the fiery darts, all the fiery darts 
of the wicked one. Now, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. Now, Paul is, uh, of course, using uh, some of the pictures from his day when he was writing this. So in those days, uh, so we're going back into the first century, uh, you know, when people, when there was people fought and uh, they would use arrows where the arrowheads were first, you know, lighted with fire and they would shoot it against the enemy, right? So they had, the arrowheads had, you know, things that were combustible. They set it on light, they lighted it, set it on fire, and they shot it. And especially if they were shooting, uh, firing these arrows across uh, uh, the uh, the fortress or the walls, you know, they did. So that's the picture he's using. So he's saying, he's, you know, he's the enemy is going to set uh, or, or shoot fiery darts. These these arrows that are, you know, lighted, uh, intending, of course, to do harm towards us. But what the Apostle Paul is telling us is God's given us faith, and this faith is going to extinguish those darts, and it's going to ex extinguish all the fiery darts, right? That means we, 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 we're not here to prevent the enemy from f shooting his fiery darts. He's going to do it. That's what his job is. But we've got faith in our hearts, which is like a shield. And it's able to quench, nullify, neutralize, extinguish all the fiery dots of the wicked one. That means no matter what the enemy does, we can be in a place where we are not hurt, we are not affected, because we've got faith in God and we keep walking. Uh, he can sh shoot his fiery dots, but not stop us because we've got faith that extinguishes all those fiery darts, and we keep moving on. The same thing here in First Peter 5, Peter is writing. He says, look, we've got an adversary, the devil, right? Uh, so yes, on this earth, while we are here, there's an adversary. We're going to face the adversary. And he walks about like a roaring lion. Uh, so he's uh, trying to use intimidation, a roaring lion strike fear in the hearts of people and he's looking for opportunity uh, on whom he whom he can devour but we can resist him being steadfast in the faith so we stand firm in faith how do we resist the devil be steadfast in faith be firm in your faith so the devil is going to try to seek whom he may devour but if you and i are firm in our faith it's a it's, it's resistance against him, meaning he's not going to be able to attack you. He's not going to be able to succeed against you and me. All we've got to do is stand fast or stand firm in the faith, right? So faith then is an important part of overcoming the enemy, overcoming Satan and all that he might attempt to do against us. We stand firm in faith. Uh, number six, just, just, you know, itemizing different ways in which faith is important in the life of the believer. Number six, we also receive the promise of the Holy Spirit by faith, right? So uh, Galatians 3.14, can somebody read that for us, please? Galatians 3.14 that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Mm. So, notice he's, uh, Paul is telling us here, we receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So, God is pouring out His Spirit on everyone, right? God is pouring out His Spirit. This is a time when the Holy Spirit is moving on, on all flesh, and God is uh, pouring out His Spirit. But we receive, we receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So faith is involved. God is pouring out His Holy Spirit on everyone, but faith is involved for each one of us to receive the promise of the Spirit. Right? So this would mean uh, for us to be baptized 
in the Holy Spirit. We receive by faith for us to pray in the Spirit, for us to manifest the gifts of the Holy Spirit, for us to move in the things of the Spirit. All of that happens through faith. And so faith, again, is so important here for us to uh, to experience and to walk in and to minister the Spirit. Right? So for us to engage with the Holy Spirit, we do it through faith. So I, that's very important for us as believers to engage with the Holy Spirit. We do it through faith. Okay. So number seven, uh, I just touched on it already, but uh, we exercise spiritual gifts and minister God's power and see miracles by faith. So not only do we receive the promise of the Spirit, but just as I said, for us to minister in the power of the Holy Spirit and to serve people with the power of the Holy Spirit, we do that also by faith. So let's read these two scripture references. Romans 12, verse 6. Romans 12, verse 6. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Okay, and Galatians chapter 3, verse 2, 3, and 5. Uh, this, this only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Mm. Amen. So you look at these two verses here. So in Romans 12, uh, Paul is saying, okay, we've got gifts, each one of us, uh, that differ according to the grace that is given to us. So we, we've all got different gifts that God has given to us, right? And it's talking about ministries that God has given to us. But then when we exercise the gifts and we, we move in our ministry, how do we do it? We do it in proportion to our faith. So he's just using one example, and I've just quoted, you know, just one part of the ministries he's talking about. So he says, if prophecy, like if you're going to prophesy, Okay, that's good, but we do it in proportion to our faith. So faith is involved when we minister or we exercise gifts, the, the ministries or the gifts that God has given to us, each one of us have been given different gifts, but as we minister, we minister in proportion to faith. Or we, we exercise it according to the faith that's in our hearts. Similarly, in Galatians 3, Paul is writing to the Galatians. He's saying, you know, when you receive the Spirit, did you receive the Spirit by doing some works that followed the law? Or was it through faith? You heard the Word, believed it, and you had faith, and then you received the Spirit. So the answer is implicit. Of course, it was by faith. So he tells them, you know, uh, uh, you've started off in the spirit. You can't be made perfect by, you know, what you do in the flesh. Now, then he says in verse five, think once again, now, he who provides, who ministers the spirit to you and works miracles, does he do it by law or by the hearing of faith? The answer is once again, it's by faith. The supply of the spirit or that's ministering the spirit and the working of miracles so even, you know, the supernatural power of God that's demonstrated, how is it going to happen? It's going to happen through faith, the hearing of faith. That means in the word is preached, we hear it, we have faith in our hearts, and then there's a release of the spirit and there's working of miracles, right? So the point I want to get across is this, that, you know, when we serve God using the gifts he's given to us, when we minister God's power, and when we see miracles, faith is involved. So we move by faith. We operate by faith. And of course, you know, as you continue uh, in, in the college, uh, now we will be having a, a course on, you know, how, on 
you'll be, of course, learning in different courses, but we will have this course on keys to supernatural ministry. And we talk about, you know, how we uh, minister supernaturally. And one of the keys is, of course, to minister by faith, right? So faith is important here as well. And you're serving God and ministering to people. Okay, let me see. I think somebody wants to ask a question. Yeah, go ahead, Divya. Yeah, uh, yes, Pastor. So, uh, so um, in First Corinthians 12, uh, it also talks about the gift of faith, right? That the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit gives. So uh, I was uh, a bit uh, like, is faith given by God as a gift or is it like from within ourselves, uh, right? Mm -hmm. What is the source of our faith? Okay. So, um, so we, let's distinguish. There is personal faith and there is the gift of faith. And I think we will cover it in an upcoming chapter, but let's explain it. So personal faith, that is the faith that God has given to each one of us. Romans 12 verse 3. So each one of us has faith in our hearts, right? And this faith um, can grow, right? So God has given, Romans 12, 3, God has dealt to every man a measure of faith. So each one of us, God has given us faith. Faith is in our heart. We have faith. We have this ability to believe God. But... Second Thessalonians 1 3, this faith can grow. So it's our responsibility to nurture and grow our personal faith in God. Right? And then what we just read, uh, Romans 12, verse 6, notice he said, uh, oops, notice what he said in Romans 12, verse 6. He said, you know, uh, uh, you minister, whatever you, when you minister, you minister in proportion to your faith. So there is faith in each of our hearts. That's faith that we can develop, we can grow. And when we minister to people, we minister in proportion to the faith we have in our heart. Right? So this is the first part. We call it as personal faith. It means your faith in God, faith that is in each of our hearts. Okay. The faith that each one of us have. It's personal faith. It can grow and we live by that. We walk by that faith and we minister by that faith. Now, the gift of faith in 1 Corinthians 12, 7 to 11 is different. Why is it different? Because it's not your personal faith. It is a infusion of, it's, let me put it like this. It's a momentary infusion of faith that comes into our hearts by the Holy Spirit in order to carry out a specific task. So that's a gift of faith. Personal faith is something you always have in your heart. The gift of faith is momentary. You and I don't have it. It's, an, it's something that in, is uh, like you and I don't hold on to it. It is something that's infused into our hearts. It's given to us at that moment, and it's for a specific purpose. So when you talk about all the nine gifts, right? These every believer can manifest all nine gifts of the Spirit, and you will be learning that, you know, in your Holy Spirit class. And um, we can all of us manifest the nine gifts of the Spirit. One of the nine gifts is the gift of faith, but all these nine gifts are. Um, 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 initiated or activated by the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit is the one who gives word of knowledge or the word of wisdom or the discerning of spirits. And one of them is the gift of faith, right? So as a believer, I have personal faith in God. I walk by my personal faith in God. I live by this personal faith. And I must develop and nurture and strengthen my personal faith in God. But at the same time, I must remain open to the gift of faith, which is it's a momentary infusion of faith for me to do a specific work, right? And we will be actually seeing back in our notes uh, an example of that gift of faith, okay? But these are two different. It's the same faith in God, but how they operate are very different. Does that clarify things? 
Yes, yes, Pastor. Uh, so the gift of faith is, uh, it, uh, when, it, when you say it is momentary, uh, what do you uh, uh, mean? Like, it just comes and just goes? Mm -hmm. It's okay. for a particular task. So example, um, okay, let's let's look at this example that we have in the notes and, you know, uh, we, it'll help clarify it. So if I go back to the notes, now you look at this in Acts three sixteen, right? Uh, let, can can we read Acts three sixteen, please? Yeah. And his name through faith in his name has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Mm. Amen. Thank you. So, in Acts chapter 3, what has happened is there was a crippled man who was healed. Right Now, try to understand the situation here. Right, um, Peter and John, that particular day, Peter and John are walking into the temple. They're coming into this particular gate, which is called Beautiful. And there's, there is a man who was lame from He's, he's been he's born lame and uh, 40 years he's, he's about 40 years of age so he's 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 been sitting there at that gate begging right now he's been there for probably years now Peter and John have passed by that gate so many times before and to pray right they're going into the temple to pray so they passed by that gate many times before. Did they have faith in their hearts? Of course, they had faith in their hearts. That's why they went to pray. They believed God. So they went. But by, they passed by this man, this lame man, before he was begging. He's been there for a long time. But that particular day, Peter looks at this man and says, look on us. And, you know, uh, Peter says, you know, silver and gold I don't have. But in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And the man is healed. And then in verse 16, Peter explains how he got healed. It says, his name, faith in his faith. Notice, faith. So it was the name of Jesus, his name. It means through his authority. Faith, through faith in his name has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. So Peter's pointing, saying, hey, faith, faith was given to us by God. But what was different about this faith? This was a gift of faith. Why? Because all the other days, Peter and John, of course they had faith, but that was their personal faith. They would go and pray and come. But that day, there was an infusion of the gift of faith, which came into his heart, and he told this man, rise up and walk. He was healed. And Peter knew it happened because of faith, but really it was the gift of faith that came into his heart to bring healing. Here, it was a momentary infusion of faith for a specific work. And the work here was to make this crippled man walk. Right. So that's the difference between personal faith and gift of faith. Gift of faith is something the Holy Spirit infuses in our hearts to do a certain work at, a certain, at, a, at that moment of time, but it's a, usually it's the healing of a sick person, the raising of a dead person, the opening of blindness. You know, it's usually something like that. But then our, our regular personal faith is the faith that we have in our heart, which we continue to grow and develop. And then it's, so we have to learn to minister both through our personal faith in God, as well as to be open to the gift of faith, which the Holy Spirit will uh, supernaturally infuse in our hearts uh, to serve people with. Okay, okay. Thank you, Pastor. Got it? Okay. Go ahead, John. Uh, Pastor, in uh, Romans 12 itself, verse, uh, verse 3 towards the end of the verse, uh, so it is written, as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. So, Pastor, does that mean God has allot uh, given us a measure of faith and we have to grow from that faith? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Okay, so it can differ from per, uh, person to person, the amount of faith God has allotted. Um, what the scripture implies is, uh, um, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. 
So the scripture is not telling us exactly, but we can assume that when we all start out, we have the same measure of faith. But what we, each one does with it will vary, right? So some people will continue to nurture their faith and continue to grow in it, and some people may not do that. So uh, uh, when we are saved, uh, so we can say, you know, we can call it saving faith. So when we are all saved, at that moment there is faith given to us in our hearts. It's the Romans 12, 3 measure of faith. It's an equal measure of faith through which we are all saved, but then we need to develop that faith. And that Second Thessalonians 1, 3, we've mentioned here, uh, each one will do it at, their, uh, at a different pace. But uh, although the scripture doesn't state it, I believe the implication is we all start out with the same measure of faith. Yeah, boss. thank you. Yeah, okay. Go ahead, Shani. So in terms of we all start off the same measure of faith, so does that mean that we all have the same faith as God and we just have to exercise it? Does that make sense? Yeah, so we have uh, a faith uh, that has been given to us from God. Um, now, uh, here's a statement that, um, you know, it's... Let's say it's like a debatable statement. Uh, the Bible tells us have faith in God. This, uh, uh, I'm, I'm quoting Mark eleven twenty two. Okay, so I'm I'm, re I'm referencing right now Mark eleven twenty two. Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty two, have faith in God. Okay. Uh, the literal translation of that would be have the faith. Of God. So there are people who state, you know, uh, God is a faith God and God, uh, and so we have the same faith as God and God is a faith God. Now, I don't believe that statement. I don't believe that statement is accurate, you know, to say God, um, let me, God is a faith God. Right. Uh, Faith is what we have in somebody greater than us. Now, God doesn't need faith. Why? Because he's God. He doesn't need to put trust in somebody greater. Right? So in that sense, God, is, God doesn't need faith. He is God. We need faith because we trust him. Right. So when people say God is a faith God and, you know, uh, uh, God works by faith and all of that, uh, that is not really scriptural. I don't see it. It's not there in the Bible. What we are saying is when we say we have the God kind of faith, that means we're having a faith that this is the, the kind of faith that is designed to be placed in God as opposed to a faith in a human person or faith in the devil or faith in uh, in the lies of the devil, you know. So, uh, so I'm just giving you my understanding of Scripture. So, uh, we have faith that has been given to us from God, which is what we are learning about, and it is faith that we put in God. But that doesn't mean God is a God who exercises faith because He doesn't need to. He is powerful. He's all powerful. He exercises His power. He exercises His omnipotence, omniscience an omnipresent, so he's God, and he doesn't need to have faith in anybody or anything. But you and I, we need to have faith in God. Uh, did I clarify, Shani, or did I confuse you? No, it's clarified. Just, I don't know if this is correct or not, but what about at the beginning? Does it say at the beginning of the Bible that he used faith to speak the world to existence? Is that true or not? Uh, it's not. I mean, God didn't. Yeah, it's not true. There is no there's no scripture that says God used faith uh, to speak things in existence. I think what happens is people look at Hebrews 11 and verse 3, and they say, you know, Hebrews 11, 3 says, By faith, we understand that the heavens were framed by the word of God. Right? So people read it as though, by faith, 
God made the heavens. That's not what they're saying, right? It says by faith. That means who's having faith throughout the chapter is people having faith. So it's by faith. That means by our faith, we understand or we come to this recognition that all of creation was framed by the word of God. So how did God create everything? By his word, not by faith, but by his word. So when people misunderstand Hebrews 11.3, they come up with that statement that says, God created everything by faith. No, but that's not what Hebrews 11.3 is saying. Hebrews 11.3 is saying that we humans, we people, we believers, by faith, we come to the recognition that God made everything by his word. So that's the misunderstanding. Okay, that clarifies it. Thank you. Yeah. All right, no problem. All right, so we have faith in God. And so what we've been talking about is, you know, how um, uh, how faith is so important in every aspect of our lives. Uh, we need it uh, to overcome this world, to live a victorious life. We walk by faith. We walk by faith in our fight against the enemy. Uh, we walk by faith to receive and to engage with the Holy Spirit in our lives. We also operate by faith in order to minister God's power and to minister healing and to minister the gifts uh, to people. So when we minister, we can minister by personal faith or can we can minister through the gift of faith. The gift of faith is something the Holy Spirit infuses. But at any point, you and I can operate by faith, right? So for instance, uh, you know, let's say somebody is unwell, somebody is sick. Now, we can minister to that person just by our personal faith. That means I have faith, that person has faith. We come in it, into agreement and we believe God. Healing will happen. Or sometimes God just moves and gives a gift of faith and says, just minister to that person. So, you know, you just minister through the gift of faith and that person is healed. You know, whether they have faith or not, you minister by the gift of faith and you minister. So we do it both ways. We all have personal faith in God. We can minister out of that faith in God. Uh, we can look to his word, believe and minister. Or we can... Uh, as the Spirit in, infuses uh, the gift of faith, we can minister out of that uh, in, to people. Okay. Let's just uh, move forward on that. Uh, so I'm going back to the notes, right? So number eight, we must fight the good fight of faith. Last point, right? Uh, could somebody read one First Timothy 6, 12 for us, please? Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Okay, thank you. So, Paul is writing to Timothy, says, hey, fight the good fight of faith. So, there's a fight of faith involved. So, obviously, there are enemies to faith. Otherwise, there will be no fight. So there are enemies, things that are trying to destroy our faith, rob us of our faith, uh, diminish our faith. So we got to fight. Got to fight the fight of faith, right? So the fight of faith means we are fighting by faith or fighting in faith, like I said here. And we're also fighting for faith. That means things that are trying to rob us of our faith. And we are fighting in faith, you know, this fight against the enemies of our faith. Now, interestingly, he says, fight the good fight, the good fight. So this is a fight that's worth fighting, right? It's a good fight. And it's also a good fight because it's a fight that we will win, that we win. Right. So what's a good fight? It's a fight that's worth fighting. And it's a fight that we know we're going to win. But there is a fight. That means I need to engage. 
I know that there will be things that are coming against my faith or trying to rob me of my faith or trying to hinder my faith. But I fight, you and I, we fight the good fight of faith. Okay, so that brings us uh, uh, to the end of this, this chapter, chapter eight. Uh, after the break, uh, we will pick up uh, chapter nine and chapter 10. What we've done in this chapter is basically just highlighted, you know, the different areas where as a believer, uh, we must learn to walk in faith, right? So uh, let's quickly review what we said. We said we are saved by grace through faith. Everything we do, we must do in faith. Uh, faith is important to receiving from God. And uh, we will kind of get into many of these details uh, as we go along. Uh, faith is the way we gain victory over the world. Faith is our shield uh, against the enemy. Uh, we receive the promise of the Holy Spirit by faith. We exercise spiritual gifts. We minister to people by faith. And we must also fight the good fight of faith, right? So basically, in everything we do as believers, faith is involved, okay? So what we're going to do after the break is we're going to talk about nurturing our faith, right? Just some, now we're going to get into the practical side of things. So we've laid the foundation. Okay, how do you nurture faith? And then chapter 10, how do you build strong faith, right? We talk about that. So those are two things where we say, you know, you practice these things in order to strengthen, uh, to nurture and strengthen your faith, okay? Yes, Shani, please ask your question. I didn't understand, it says in your notes for number eight, this fight of faith is a fight for faith and a fight in faith. I understand fight for faith, but can you clarify fight, fight in faith and give an example, please? Yes, so to uh, fight, in faith means uh, I am fighting out of my place of faith in God, of having faith in God. So fight in faith. So uh, example, if, uh, uh, you know, uh, maybe we can think about many situations, whether it's finances or family or whatever. I'd say take a family situation. So let's say, you know, as a believer, uh, you see that the enemy is trying to make inroads, and I believe it sees that the enemy is trying to make inroads against the family, trying to cause confusion, causing strife and division and trouble in the family. So what's happening? The enemy is trying to come against this person's faith, his faith. What must this person do? He must recognize it's a fight for my faith. The enemy is trying to weaken my faith in God that, you know, God has promised that, you know, my house will be blessed, my family will be blessed, my children will be blessed, so on. God has promised that. But the enemy is trying to do this to weaken my faith in God. So it's a fight for faith. But what must the believer do? He must fight back in faith. So no devil. I am standing strong. In my faith in God and his word, God's word says the house of the righteous will stand. God's word says he blesses the house of the righteous. God's word says that in the house of the righteous, there is a voice of rejoicing and salvation. So what's he doing? He's fighting in faith, right? He's being strong in faith. He's fighting back. So it's a fight for faith because the enemies come to try to destroy the faith. But it's a fight in faith. The believer fights back by faith in God. Okay, thank you. I understand. Okay. Yeah. Welcome. All right. So what we're going to do is after the break, we'll come back. Uh, are there any other questions before we go for a break? Carlson, go ahead. Yeah, Pastor Mark. Mark eleven twenty two. 22, we read there, so Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. So I've heard uh, like some preachers say that have God kind of faith. So what is that God kind of faith? Then they right. refer to this verse. That's Thank true. You. So like we said, uh, the literal translation in the Greek of Mark eleven twenty two 22 is have the faith of God. 
or have the God kind of faith. So in one sense, it's true. The God kind of faith is the kind of faith that we have in God, the living God. So you can call it the God kind of faith, which is different from the human kind of faith in a human person or faith in the devil or faith in something else like fear. So when they say have the God kind of faith, it simply means have faith in God or the faith that is placed in God. That understanding is fine. But what has happened is people have said God is a faith God and that's not true, right? Because God doesn't need to have faith in God, right? Faith in anyone else, he's God. So have the God kind of faith is a correct statement. It's just saying have this faith in the living God, the God kind. So it's the same as it is mentioned in the verse, have faith in God. Um, have faith in God, have the God kind. Uh, you know, um, it's not the same. Uh, it's not, so if you ask me is the statement, have the God kind of faith, a God translation or rendition of Mark eleven twenty two? The answer is no, right? Mark eleven twenty two says, "Have faith in God, or have the faith of God." Yeah. So the the God. So if you say have the faith of God, or you can say, if they want to render that as have the God kind of faith, maybe it's okay. But really, Mark eleven twenty two is saying, "Have faith in God. Put your faith in God." Right. Um, is the statement have the God kind of faith you know an accurate rendition or rendering of Mark 11 22 you know okay you know it's not a perfect rendering but it's okay yeah I just say have faith in God I think that's fine yeah that's what <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> yeah. any, any other question, please? Okay, good. So let's go for our break. Uh, we'll be back in 10 minutes and then we'll get into chapter nine, which is the next chapter. Okay, God bless. See you shortly. Thank you, Pastor.